Live in Southern California, this is California News at 5. I am attention to a suspect wanted for a double 187 in West LA Division. Suspect named Orenthal James Simpson, OJ Simpson. Suspect may be driving a white or light colored Ford Bronco. Suspect was last seen wearing a yellow golf shirt, faded blue jeans, and white Reebok tennis shoes. Suspect is possibly armed at use caution. An all points bulletin from one of the most famous men in America, O.J. Simpson. These pictures from yesterday, the last time we saw O.J. and knew for sure where he was. Tonight, quite simply, he has disappeared. O.J. Simpson is wanted for murder. Good evening, everybody. It's 5 o'clock, and I'm Paul Moyer. And I'm Colleen Williams. We begin tonight at 5 o'clock with a story we've been watching all day long with you, the Simpson Golden Murders. We understand now that Fernell Chapman is standing by, a news conference by Robert Shapiro, O.J.'s attorney. Fernell? Yes, he has just arrived, Robert Shapiro, and he is about to inform us as to how things stand. Yes. Do you, you have an, an opening statement, now? Mr. Shapiro? Can you get an audio level? You guys, are you guys ready to go? Yes, okay. we are. First to uh, OJ, wherever you are, for the sake of your family, for the sake of your children, please surrender immediately. Surrender to any law enforcement official at any police station, but please do it immediately. I now want to uh, take a moment to bring you up to date on the events of today. Tuesday, I met with the members of the Los Angeles Police Department Robbery Homicide Division. We met for about an hour. At that meeting, I gave the detectives my promise that I would make available O.J. Simpson for the purpose of interview or surrender in the event they were going to file criminal charges. I gave them all of my numbers to be reached in that event. This morning at 8.30 a.m., I received a call at my home asking me to bring O.J. Simpson in for the purpose of surrendering on a murder charge to Parker Center. I agreed to have him there by 11 o'clock, although I told them it would be very pressing for me because I had to get his doctors to notify him, to perhaps to be there because of his very, very frail, fragile, and emotional state. At about 9.30, I arrived at a residence in San Fernando Valley where O.J. was. I went in with his good friend, Robert Kardashian. He was just waking up, and I told him that I had been informed by the Los Angeles Police Department that he was being charged with first-degree murder in two deaths, that it was a special circumstance charge, and that we have to surrender by 11 o'clock. I asked Mr. Kardashian to immediately call the two physicians or the two doctors who have been treating OJ. First, we alerted Dr. Rob Heisinger, who was the first to arrive, who is an internist and has been treating Mr. O.J. Simpson for the last two days. And then we notified Mr. Dr. Saul Fairstein, a psychiatrist who has also been treating O.J. for the last two days. They arrived at the location. We had previously arranged for Dr. Heisinger to be there today at noon for the purpose of doing a continued medical examination. During the two days that Dr. Heisinger was treating Mr. Simpson, he observed a limp node under his armpit. He needed to do continued tests to resolve the questions he had in his mind. We anticipated the test would take about 15 minutes. The test, in fact, took about an hour. In addition, we had two other well-known forensic people 
who we have asked to come aid in this investigation. Present were Dr. Michael Baden, who is the head pathologist for the New York State Police Department, and Dr. Henry Lee, who is the chief criminalist for the state of Connecticut and is here with special permission from the governor. All of us were together trying to perform our independent functions as quickly as possible and to get OJ in the car and to the police station. I was in constant contact with LAPD on a 15-minute basis. I was also talking to Marsha Clark of the District Attorney's Office. I had the doctors individually get on the phone and explain the delays. and told O.J. that we had to really get moving. He said he needed some time to talk to his family. He called his children and talked to them. He called his mother and talked to her. He called his personal lawyer and orally dictated and later signed a codicil to his will. He wrote three letters that were placed in sealed envelopes that he gave to Mr. Kardashian. I had arranged the following means of surrender with the commander of the Los Angeles Police Department. I was going to come down with Mr. Simpson in my car being accompanied by the psychiatrist, Dr. Kirstein, and by his good friend, Robert Kardashian. Because we were concerned about the potential for suicide we were being followed by A.C. Cowlings, his lifelong friend, and Dr. Rob Heisinger. Sometime later in the morning, maybe a little bit, maybe past noon, I got a call from the commander of Los Angeles Police Department saying that we must now announce that O.J. Simpson is a fugitive, where is he? I gave him the address. Actually, I asked Dr. Uh, Fairstein to give him the address and directions to the home in the San Fernando Valley. He said he would be sending up a black and white unit immediately. At that time, all of the professionals, the doctors, myself, and Mr. Kardashian were upstairs in a rather large house. O.J. was downstairs, and at the time that I was getting the message from Los Angeles Police Department, he was wailing. He was with Mr. Cowling. I did not, nor did anyone else to my knowledge, tell O.J. that the police were coming to take him into custody. Police arrived about 15 minutes later, came into the home, we greeted them. They were very polite and courteous. They told us that they would follow normal procedure, handcuff OJ, and take him to the police station, and they agreed that we would be able to accompany him. At that time, it was suggested that Dr. Fairstein go up and tell him that he was going to be transported in handcuffs into custody. It was at that time when Dr. Fairstein went in the room to alert him that we discovered for the first time that O.J. was not present. Al Cowlings was not present. I have on numerous occasions in the past 25 years made similar arrangements with the Los Angeles Police Department. They have always, and the District Attorney's Office and Mr. Garcetti. All of them have always keeping their, kept their word to me, and I have always kept my word to them. In fact, I arranged the surrender of Eric Menendez from Israel on a similar basis. We are all shocked by this sudden turn of events. Now I would like to introduce to you Mr. Robert Kardashian, who is one of Mr. Simpson's closest and dearest friends who will read a letter that O.J. Simpson wrote in his handwriting today.
thank you.